Recording in progress. Okay, so here we go. What? 20, which one? 24. All right, so I'm going to pull up 24. Here we go. Now, again, I'm going to change this next year because everyone said peanuts, all right? But these were actually pennants, all right? Now, again, plain is $4, fancy is $8. Do you agree? And it says there were a total of 30. Not every time, but most of the time when they give you a total, you know that one of them is going to be X and one of them is going to be 30 minus X. You with me on that? So now to find the total cost, make sure you're understanding what I'm saying. You would multiply the cost by the number that you bought. Do you agree with that? Now I'll give you an example. For example, let's say we bought 10 of the plane. How much money would it cost me? $40, right? You multiplied four times 10. Oh, I thought you said okay. You with me now, right? And then this would be the cost. And then this would be the total that you bought. So you're multiplying eight times 30 minus X. Okay, so I was confused because I didn't think it was 30 minus X from pain, I think. It doesn't matter which one. It makes no difference because they're asking how many fancy ones you bought, right? So if they're asking about the fancy ones, you're going to have to do this. Now, someone said yesterday, put the X with the one that you're trying to find. That's helpful, right? I just don't have to do it that way. Bless you. All right. Now, I just explained 24. Is that good for you? All right. So now we have here in my situation, I got X equals 18 after I do all the work but that's plain, right? So everybody should be able to tell me then there were 12 fancy pennants and that was my answer, all right? That was my answer on that. All right, Luca, what? Yes, Molly. Well, because remember 18, please listen to me. 18 represents X, right? Plain is X. You hearing me? We want fancy. So fancy is 30 minus X. 30 minus 18 is 12. You hear me now? So make your note on there, 30. Now, if you set up X as fancy, then the answer came out to be X equals 12. All right, the answer came out to be X equals 12. All right, somebody else. Luca. Uh, 25. Of course, super important problem. Definitely a coin problem on the test tomorrow. 100% sure. This time we're talking about dimes and nickels. How many total coins are there? 52. So if there is a total of 52, that means... One is, 52 minus X. One is X and the other is 52 minus X. If you don't know that, that's probably two questions tomorrow. You're not going to know. Or you have to know that. Now, the next thing I'm surprised with for some kids is they forgot what a dime is because you just don't use money anymore. A dime is what? Ten cents. A nickel is how much? Five cents. It's not 0.5. 0 0.05. If you don't know that, you got to make sure you make a note. A quarter is worth how much? 0.25. You got to know that. All right. Now, Luca, do you understand how I labeled this? Agreed? Now, again, this is very similar to the last problem, MM. Right? You have dimes right? And you have the value. What do you do? Multiply them together. And that tells you how much money you're going to have. So I multiplied the dimes times 0.1 and the nickels by 0.05. And then it was 
a total of four dollars and fifty cents. Everybody good with that? What? If you switch this, come on, guys. Everybody's asking me that now. I'm not going to answer it again. If this is X, this can be 52 minus X also. Same answer. Oh, sorry. Yeah, same answer. Now, just to make sure, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and, and help me out here. So this becomes 0.1X plus uh, 0 0.05 times 52 is, what is that? 2.2. 2. No, it's not. Is it 2.6? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Thank you. I'm sorry. Minus 0 0.05 X equals 450. Now, here's what threw kids off, believe it or not. 0.1 minus 0 0.05. Do I agree? That's 0 0.05 X is equal to. Now, when you subtract that, that became 1.9. Is that correct? So then X became 38. Now, that's not the answer because we have to ask what's the question. The question is, how many nickels? Well, 38 represents the number of what? Dimes. Now, if you did it the other way, you found nickels right off the bat, right? So 38 minus, or 52 minus 38 is the number of dimes, or I'm sorry, the number of nickels. So the number of nickels was 24. Anybody else get that? That's what I said, 14. I said 14. I said 14. 14 nickels. Here we go. Man, that's two times already today. You might as well take down the sign. That's pathetic. All right. I'm not recording, thank goodness. What? Whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up with this. 25. Any other questions with 25? Now, again, I, you're supposed to start to see if you've worked hard, they're kind of similar. That's what you're really supposed to see. They are kind of similar. All right, here we go. Now, next, 26. Same principle here, correct? Except this time we have nickels and quarters, right? Did you just take, oh, sorry, just nope, that's perfectly fine. Remember, a nickel is worth what? 0.05. And a quarter is worth 0.25. How are we doing on this, guys? Everybody happy with that explanation? Now, of course, let's do the division here. And so we get x equals how much? 14. Molly, x equals 14. Right, anybody else get 14 is what I'm asking. Now, it wants to know quarters, right? In this case, does everybody agree? We're just gonna write down there are 14 quarters. There are 14 quarters. Anybody have any issues with that? Anybody? All right, I'm pretty happy with that. What, Zeb? Okay, that's good. We're jumping down to 33. All right. Here we go. Now, again, let's just kind of line it up. Let me read it real quick. On Saturday, Kim worked three hours more than Ann did. Together, they worked one hour less than three times the hours Ann worked. How many hours did Kim work? Wow, that's just confusing. All right, that's confusing. But it's not going to be confusing for us because we can write things down. You know how to organize your thoughts better. All right. So here it says on Saturday, Kim worked three hours more than Ann. So again, I'm just putting K and A. So tell me what you got. Exactly. On Saturday, Kim worked three hours more than Ann did. Together. So how many did they work together? Uh, two X plus three. Wow, that's nice. Together, feels good. Two X plus three. Mm -hmm. Together, they worked 
one hour less than, how do I do one hour less than? One hour less than three times and three X. Wow. Very nice. All right. Now that was kind of unique for us. If you got that right, then you, you should ace the test tomorrow. All right. That's not one that we've already done. All right. Which means you're able to think problems through now a little better. If you didn't get that right, you just got to go home and look at it again and rewrite. All right. What? I got the first part on the other side of the equation, but um, for the second part where it says three x minus one, um, I'm confused because I got three open parentheses two plus three close parentheses. Stop! 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 Stop there. Erase all that, and let's figure out why it's three x minus one. I don't want to hear why you did it wrong. And now if we solve this out, we end up with X equals four. And so then Kim worked what? Seven hours. All right. Yes. No, 33 I'm on. Anybody else have any questions with 33? All right, to me, that's the way it should be set up. All right, what? I, I set it up correctly, but I forgot to add the X's. Like yeah, I know, that's annoying, I, I, right? No, I, I listen to me. I understand the issue, right? It's the details. That's why if you've been doing the problems and you've been working hard, then this isn't an issue. It really isn't, all right? It's really not an issue, all right? You get experience, you get a little better the next time you do it. What? No. All right. 33. Anybody else with 33? All right. Avery, what now? What number are you having trouble with? Go, Samantha. I know. Stop. Stop. Don't even say anything. Ignore that. Go. Okay, yeah, this one's a really nice problem. All right, another one that was unique. Another one that's unique, all right, which required a little bit of thought on your part. All right, come on now. So I have seven eighths I got correct. Seven eighths of the test I got correct. Then how or what fraction of the test did I get wrong? One eighth of the test. One eighth of the test I got incorrect. Does anybody have any issues with that? If I got seven out of eight correct, I missed what? One out of eight. So do I know how many questions are on the test? So listen, one eighth of the test I have incorrect. One eighth of X equals five. Put your hand down for a second. All right, it makes me feel like you're not listening. Anybody have any questions with one eighth T equals five? Now, why did I put T? Because that's the questions that are on the test. All right, now, if you want to put X there, I don't matter, it doesn't matter. What? How do I undo multiplication with a fraction? No, no, you multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal? Right, plus you're asking me now this, listen, this is what I'm trying to get in your head. That's why I'm saying it loud. What number divided by eight is five? What number divided by eight is five? 40. You don't need a calculator for that, right? Now, to answer your question, everybody's going to type this in on the calculator. If you do five divided by one divided by eight, that will give you 0.625. That's incorrect. All right. You need parentheses around the one eighth. Now do five divided by one eighth with parentheses. Now, what does it give you? It gives you 40. 
You could also do it this way. Come on now, everybody. If you're not practicing with your calculator, you're making a mistake. I don't care how smart you think you are. You should have your calculator out. You should be doing what I'm telling you to do so you know how to use your test or your calculator real effectively tomorrow. Now, also you can type in five divided by, then hit the alpha. Now the number right next to it, I didn't know this till someone recently pointed out to me is the fraction bar, right? So if you hit alpha and hit the number right next to the alpha, the, 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 the fraction comes up on the screen. Does everybody see that? Or you can hit alpha y equals and it will come up. All right, so you can do five. As long as you type it in as a fraction, it will work. If you use the division sign, it will not work. You hear me, Jolie? Yeah. So you're good with that, right? Isn't that nice? Yeah. All right, so if you're gonna divide by a fraction, now you're not gonna make that mistake, even though I prefer you say what? Multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by eight. All right, I'm happy with you on that. That was an excellent question. Hopefully you feel good. What? Wait, so 40 is the answer? 40 is the answer. But, like, why would you do um, 1 over 8 times 5? That's just going to confuse you. I didn't do 1 over 8 times 5. I never did that. No, 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 no. Like, you get 40, 8 times 5. And you divide. I don't know what your question okay, is, man. Like, why wouldn't you do um, 7 over 8 divided by 10? Because seven over eight is the correct answers. This is the what? Incorrect. One, come on now, one eighth is incorrect. Do you not know that? No, I do, but like I'm just confused. There's nothing to be, Evan, five goes with incorrect. Five doesn't go with seven eighths. Seven eighth is correct. You put correct with correct, incorrect with incorrect. One eighth of the test is incorrect. Five questions are incorrect. Those things go together. Right? Yes, good. All right, come on. What? I have a question number 34. 34. I don't know how you would do this. Yeah, now listen, guys. This one's really nice, all right? This one's really hard. So everybody needs to give me your attention on this one. Or I think it's really hard if it's the one I'm thinking about. All right, I could be wrong, but all right. So there are 44 coins, right? Now, please watch on this one. I, I, this one's not on the test, but this was, I almost put it on the test. All right, so here we go. There are 44 coins. So everybody's gonna do nickels, dimes, and quarters. I put 0.05, 0.1, and 0.25. Now look, if you know this, you're acing everything. All right, you know everything, all right? This one's hard, all right? So there's twice as many dimes as nickels. There are twice as many dimes as nickels. How many nickels are there? So there are X nickels, and then there would be what? Two X, right? And eight fewer nickels than quarters. Eight fewer nickels than quarters. Is that what that says? Wow, why are you saying X plus eight? So, so there are, let me just make sure this is correct. There are twice as many dimes as nickels and eight fewer nickels than quarters. If there are eight fewer nickels, then what was the quarters again? X plus eight. That wasn't that hard, right? For some reason, that's really challenging for kids, right? Because they see fewer and they automatically write what? Minus, right? But does everybody agree we already have the nickel defined? Now, let me put something else up on the board now to really help you, I think. Let's say, for example, and I'm not saying this is true, so don't say, well, how did you get that number? I got that number because my brain couldn't organize the variables. Is everybody hearing me? So I always had trouble with that. So now I'm telling you that I just made up numbers. So I said, if there were 10 nickels, there would be what? There would be 20 dimes. Then I read it again and I said, okay, 
There are eight fewer nickels than quarters. There are eight fewer nickels than quarters. That means the quarters would have to be what? That means the quarters would have to be 18. That's what I'm trying to teach some of you. All right, I'm with you, trust me. Some people just see things better. All right, you can train yourself to see things better by writing in numbers, and now you can see the relationship, right? From nickels to dimes, I multiplied by two, and from nickels to quarters, I added eight. And I don't even have to worry about the what, the fewer. But does everybody agree there's still eight fewer nickels than quarters? Everybody with me? All right, if you can do that, I, I feel you're in great shape. All right, you got to read carefully. Now what? Now we're getting ready to do that. So how much is a nickel worth? How much is a nickel, the value of a nickel? Right, so if I have X nickels, how much money do I have? Point what? Point what? Zero five. Zero five. Everyone messes that up. They put point five down thinking they're brilliant. And then how much is the dime? Uh, point one. Then how much is a quarter? Uh, right. Now, does that make sense? Yeah. That's how much money I have in nickels. That's how much money I have in dimes. That's how much money I have in quarters. Oh, man. Do I really even need to do that? Do I care about the money? I was just programmed. I thought I was going to say money. Do I even care about that? No. No. So let's look at this. Pay attention now. This is plus, plus, and then it would have to equal money, correct? Then I just tried to find where the money is. Is there money? No. no. All it's interested in is the total number of what? Coins is 44. All right, come on now. It's not a total loss. All right, so do I need this step right here? Someone who's paying attention. Do I need that? No. no. All I need to do is write what, Avery? Uh, 44 equals 2x plus 8. 44 equals x plus 2x plus x plus 8. Because this is what? These are the coins. Those are the coins. Everybody with me on that? Jolie, you with me? I didn't mean to mess anybody up. All right, I thought it was a money problem. It's not a money problem. It's a coin. How many coins? What? I'm just writing out the equation for everybody so everybody can see. I think it's brilliant that you can just look at that and say that's 4x plus 8. But I'm showing people that I added all the coins together. What? What are you talking about now? The part where after you made the equation and you distributed. Oh. You listening? Come on, Maya. I already said that's garbage. All right. If there was a dollar amount, I would be correct. All right. But what I wrote was garbage. All right. Because it wasn't talking about dollar amount. It was strictly talking about the number of coins. What? Yes, we're going to get to that, okay. right? We're definitely going to get to that. So X, so in this case we have, and that is on the test, all right? So 44 is equal to 4X plus 8, right? So 32 equals what? Thirty-six, right? So x is equal to what? Nine. X is equal to nine. So there are nine what? Nickels. There are how many dimes? Eighteen. And there are how many quarters? And you're happy because you think you're correct. And are you correct? No. They're not asking about that. They're asking about now how much money do you have in the piggy bank, right? So if you have nine nickels, you have how much money? 45 cents. If you have 18 dimes, you will have what? A dollar 80. And if you have 17 quarters, you will have $4.25. That is brilliant. So all your money is? You have $6.50.
in your piggy bank? Well, it depends on who you are. All right. Okay, Luca. Uh, I get everything from problem except for why would you do plus eight? Why would I do plus eight? Yeah. Because there's a plus eight right here. Yeah, it's an eight zero. I don't know what your question is. Tell me again. It says there are twice as many dimes as nickels and eight fewer nickels. So you think it should be X minus eight? Yeah. But are there more nickels or more quarters? Quarters. Right. So if there are more quarters, how many more quarters than nickels are there? So, do you see why it's x plus eight? Put your hand down. You just told me there are more quarters than nickels. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah. So, if you do x minus eight, there are less quarters than nickels. If there are x nickels, Are there more quarters or less quarters? Well, you have to read the, what does it say? There are dimes as nickels and eight fewer nickels than quarters. There are eight fewer nickels than quarters. So which is more, nickels or quarters? There are more quarters. So it can't be X minus eight because that would be less quarters. You see what I'm saying now, right? That's hard. X plus eight. All right, what? 30, which one now? 36. All right, here we go. Just to make sure. All right, so we have, this is same principle. Same principle as what we just did. So let's do it. Boat, motor, trailer. A boat weighs 1,500 pounds more than its motor. X is the motor. And then the boat is X plus 1,500. The boat also weighs what? 1,900 pounds more than the trailer. So the boat obviously weighs more than the trailer. You with me? So the trailer is going to weigh 1,900 less than the boat. Do you agree with that, Luca? The boat weighs 1,900 more than the trailer, so the trailer must weigh 1,900 less than the boat. Do you agree with that? So that's why it's X plus 1,500 minus 1,900. Do you agree with that? So then the trailer is X minus 400. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. What, Evan? Just come on, Evan. Get to your question. <sighs> Never mind. Evan, he asked me about 36. I'm working on 36. You raise your hand and you ask me about, is this on the test? Then you ask me about another problem. I don't care. We're doing 36. True? Let us get done with 36. Don't ask me what's on the test. All right? All of these problems could be on the test. I thought I made that clear. Now, let's finish up. Together, what? All right, together. But let's say 2x. Plus 1,500 um, equals five times X minus yes, and that's the right answer. Oh, right. right, now work it out. Now work it out. What? Um, back to 34. Really? No, I have my hand up in one second. So, um, can you have made two quarters? I don't care as long as you got the right answer. Yeah, but Did you get the right answer? Yeah. Okay, then I don't care. 
All right, we've had that discussion. You guys can do it however you want, get the right answer, and I don't care. Okay? That's what I'm grading tomorrow, the answers. All right, and I told you, if the answer's not on there, there's trouble. I'm not being nice about it tomorrow. All right, it'll be wrong. All right, now, Evan, what? Now we're on you. Consecutive odd integers, X and X plus two. You agree with that? So far, so good. Perimeter. Remember, the perimeter of a rectangle is 2L plus 2W. You agreeing with me on that? What do you want it to be? I asked you, do you understand consecutive odds? You said yes. X plus what? It should be what? Now we're in good shape, right? Now you got it all figured out? Just a minute, Jolie. Evan, yeah. is that good? Uh, yes. Thank you. Jolie, um, can I see? whatever you need to do. I don't, you know I don't care. Can I, uh, I don't care. Don't interrupt me. That's what I'm telling you guys. All right, interrupting is worse. Just go. I'm trying to help people. Go. See, I'm set up number 39. 39, beautiful. Let's get down to 39. Oh, come on now. Five times a number. What's that? Increase by three is the same as. You are amazing, girl. That's good. All right, that's good. So 2x equals 24, x equals 12. Okay, good for you, go. Number 40. 40, yeah, yeah, now look, this is a nice one, nice one, right? And this one, you had to remember, there's a trick question. We've done it on every single test, every single review, it's always on there. Now, Ali, why did I do x minus one? No, 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 not the revenue. Tell her. You already bought the first pound. The first, first pound cost you $7, right? So when you take your box, you're going to pay seven bucks for the first pound and then $3.25 for every other pound. Every other pound means you're not paying for the first pound twice. Now you understand why it's X minus one. Anybody else? X minus one. Anybody have any questions with number 40? All right, and you guys can solve that out. Tell me. Well, it's the cost of the package is $7 for the first pound. So you have to pay for the first pound. Then you have to pay for all the other pounds. And all the other pounds cost what? Three twenty-five, dollars right? So that's why it's X minus one. Now, listen to me. This is another indication. I'm telling you, I remember this. All right, if you have this problem and I say you brought in a five pound box, you're gonna pay $7 plus four times 325, right? That makes sense to you, right? Well, the four is not five. What do we do? We subtracted one, right? Because we already paid for the first pound here. You with me on that? All right. So that's good. All right. Maya, tell me. Know how I can know that they're not talking about the first pound. The what? It's not specifying that they're not talking about the first pound when they're talking about the The UPS charges seven dollars for the first pound and three twenty-five for each additional pound. That's what this formula is right here. Yeah, I know, but the question is that 
How many pounds will it take for the UPS and the federal uh, FedEx to cost the same amount? When are the costs equal? This is the cost of UPS. This is the cost for FedEx. When are they equal? Oh, what? It's the same as the one before this, actually, except there is no X minus one. You make an extra 2,500 per year. You make an extra 5,000 per year. This person starts out making 75,000. This person starts out making 50,000. If I was going to work in the company for a short period of time, I'd probably start with this company. If I knew I was going to teach for 30 years, then I would definitely choose this company. So they want to know how long before the, they have ex exactly the same amount of salary. Okay. You're with me on that? Yeah. All right. What? Question 38. 38. Yeah, this is definitely on there. An orange has 15 more than a grapefruit. So orange and grape. Teen is what? And? Okay, so now how many calories does an orange or how many oranges do we have? Oh, we have 20 oranges. So it would be 20 times X plus 15 and plus. Beautiful. Oh. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Come on. Allie, what are we doing? You feeling good? Anybody else? Feels good, doesn't it? Finally, so good if you work hard, you finally figure it out. Allie, good for you, girl. Oh, all right. Come in during lunch if you want. Come in during PE if you want. All right. I appreciate you guys. Evan, you understood what I was saying, right? Yeah. I'm not mad at you. Can you do a consecutive integers between X and X plus three or X plus three?